Welcome back to Love with the Classic, and we're right after the previous parts. If you haven't seen that, you can go down below and check out the playlist with all of the previous parts. So that's uploading right now. You guys got to watch that really soon. And I am checking the emissions. I got my trusty daily driver here just as a battery. I got an exhaust gas analyzer, and we're checking, and it seems really good. Shouldn't it be bad? This car does have a catalytic converter, US specs, so that does help. And it's set really lean at the moment, or not really lean, but just slightly lean. But I think that will be good for the test, and then I might just turn them up a tiny bit right after. But let's have a look at the tester and see what it says. This is a uh, Gunson gas tester, a digital one. Picked it up recently. I've had an older one with an analog gauge, but it wasn't didn't feel that accurate anymore. And it's fully warmed up. It's been sitting here for a while, and it stays between 1.9 and 1.7 which is utterly fantastic. Um, it's just amazing what you know a catalytic converter can actually do with carbs in front. And uh, yeah, so it is running nicely. Idle is really good. Both chokes are turned off. There is where the temperature likes to sit. So the gauge rate's a little low, but I'm okay with that, just as long as you know. Other than that, it really just needs a good run. It is very, very smooth. Which had a coin, I could balance it on it. It is utterly, utterly smooth. Got the air filter put on there as well. Just loosely, I'm gonna put all the heating ducts and all of that later. But this thing is it's running really well now. Let's actually turn it off. There we go. Got some things left to do. MOT is tomorrow. Uh, I just fixed some electrical things here, fixed the speedo cable, put the dash top back on. This piece of rubber here with the, the Mr. Flap was missing. It was in the uh, in the boot, so we'll put that in, put that back together. All leaks seem to be fixed. I'm not seeing anything. I'm seeing a tiny oil drip up front, which seems like front main uh, seal. I'm not going to do anything about that. Possibly it will get better with some use. I'm still going to clean out the gauze in there in the um, crankcase ventilator, but um, yeah. So what's left to do for the test is we gotta connect the hose up to here so we can wash the windshield. Gotta check, I don't think the horn works. The windshield wipers work. All lights work except for this side marker right here. So I'm gonna take the screws out. We'll see what kind of bulb is in there and what's going on. I got a bolt down the battery. Uh, this fuel line here, I'm probably just gonna connect it somewhere here with a zip tie a little bit so it goes away from the heat here. So that is the fuel after it gets cooled by the fuel cooler. And seat belts are now sorted. So they're working as they should. Um, yeah. This is getting a little bit shorter at least, but I'm going to tackle some of these things, do some more testing, and then we should be able to go and test this thing tomorrow. Part 7 has just gone live on the channel. You guys have seemed to be enjoying it so far, and I'm out here just working on the next thing. I fixed a couple electrical issues, just really simple ones, like replacing the bulbs up here. So they both work. I'm just going to put the covers back on. I've traced the issue... I've think it's the windshield washer pump that's not working but I have a test light in here so we can test if the wiring is working I do have a replacement pump if the pump is broken and some new hoses and things that will need to get all of that working and um, I picked up something that I mean it was just a little bit of a luxury but if you remember correctly the car was stuck on maximum AC and I think it's a good idea to at least be able to have heat when we drive in case it gets hot. And this is the climate control little Delanair computer box thing. It sits all the way under, you see the brown thing? I can't even see it. It's all the way under in here, or back there actually. But I plugged in this one, and the system is actually working now. The servo motor needs to be lubricated, but it is working. And that's the trick in how that you 
you don't remove the old one it's so difficult to get out you really just need to remove the heater box to get it out so this one i'm just going to tuck up under behind here but let me show you that it works so now it's on max cold and it's starting to move and and it was back it's a little noisy so I'm going to lubricate that on the other side, but very, very happy that that seems to be working. We'll make the trip more enjoyable. And also I want to fix that for the owner, but let's have a look at that test light over there. See if it lights up. It does. So we have power to there. That pump is broken. I'm going to replace that and we'll see if we get the windshield washer to work and and I need to go underneath and fix some things with the fuel lines, but we're getting very, very close. Okay, let's see if this one makes a sound. All right, that works. I'm just gonna hook up uh, all the hoses again, run some new hose. I can't find the old one that's supposed to go to here. And then we should have this working pretty soon. All right, it's working. It needs some adjusting. But the most important thing, they're working. Now, on to the next thing. Good morning. Um, it's quite early, and I am almost at the inspection place. Been up, uh, well, it's not that early right now, but I've been up early. It's about, uh, it's exactly 9 in the morning. My time is in about 20 minutes. I got four minutes left to go. Um, first time out on the highway, a um, couple things. Bit of wind noise here. See if we can do something about that because that's going to be very annoying. Uh, but the nice thing with the XJC is that when you have the windows down, there's very little buffeting uh, compared to with um, uh, the four door. I think it's maybe that the little quarter light. I'm not sure, but it's, uh, it's actually very pleasant. Uh, I stopped to get some fuel. That went well. I filled up the, some transmission fluid that was a little bit low. However, Speedo stopped working about three kilometers into the drive, so I've been using my phone as a GPS. And um, after I filled up with fuel, my um, temperature gauge stopped working. So um, I've been using the smell vision because I didn't really have time to um, have a look at it. So I'm hoping that everything is fine. Oil pressure is good. It hasn't smelled weird. It hasn't run weird. I did pass a truck, which you know, I got weird sort of burning smell, but I think that was actually from that truck and not from me. Something smelled rather hot. Uh, but as soon as I passed that, you know, <laughs> that stopped. But really, really, um, fingers crossed. But otherwise, new tires feel good. Brakes feel pretty good. Um, yeah, I was up late last night fixing a lot of small things on it and um, yeah, really, really hoping this goes well. If it does, we have um, just plans to fix a couple small things on this thing during the day. I might uh, turn up the carbs a little bit. I turned them up a tiny, tiny bit, so they're not on the all slim. But when we get back, we can read the spark plugs and just see um, sort of what it wants. I mean see if we can um, just make sure it's not running too lean but now I just wanted it to pass um, emissions and um, yeah and if all goes well I'm waiting for a part to come in the mail today and if I get that then we can go and uh, fix the AC hopefully which would be nice for the trip because it's gonna be quite warm apparently when we drive not like extremely hot but uh, nice summer weather but I'm about to pull in there I'm gonna go in and register and um, We'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed. All right, that was a truly nerve-wracking experience. I always hate doing this, especially first time with the car. And, you know, we don't have any time because we're um, in 24 hours. We're on the road. But, you know, it passed. It's good to go for two years. Um, I had to do a little bit of negotiating. Um, but one thing, it was, uh, it was fine. I got it as an advisory instead. Um, it has the federal lights in the front and the rear, and they're not legal, which is weird because this thing has been inspected here several times. It's also been imported and registered with all those lights. 
Um, so I'm probably going to check with the um, like our version of the DMV, like the, the transport ministry, w why that happened and why we might have to change it. Uh, in the rear, it's pretty easy, just removing the bulbs and the side lights. In the front, you need different bulbs because they both do uh, front position lights and blinkers in the same. Otherwise, um, a little bit of surface rust on the brakes. Makes sense, car's been sitting for eight, nine years. Uh, so that's going to go away with some driving. And we have a starting to have a little bit of a split in one of the gators for the um, upper, um, what's it called? Ball joint. And I knew, I knew that. Um, I told the owner that everything is really dry in the front end, but we don't have time to fix it right now. It really needs like a front end rebuild. We can do that at some point. The interesting thing, which you did not see, is it has a split steering gator, which I said. Uh, I just would, I could not get the um, tie rod off. It's completely rusted solid onto um, the steering rack, and I was afraid I was going to break the tie rod when removing it. I don't have a new one, so uh, I just left that. But he didn't see that, so that's really good. But uh, speedo doesn't work. Don't think I have time to fix that. We're going to use the GPS on the phone and the rev counter works. So that will be fine. It needs a new speedo cable, I think, because it gets stuck, it lubricated. So it was started doing like this a little bit and then it just quit. Uh, temperature gauge not working, but I'm going to check that when I'm home because it's really hot in the engine bay to get the cables and check that. It's probably just a bad connection somewhere or in the dash. But we're going to head back. Oh, fire this old girl up. And, uh, yeah. Slight, slight little back fire there. Don't really know why. Yeah. Probably, uh, it's been fully warmed up now, so maybe I need to raise the idle a tiny bit. Because it's very, very low. But I'm going to try and just make it back home now and uh, continue getting ready for the drive tomorrow. All right, it's a couple of hours since the last update. It's early evening now and I've been pretty busy. Uh, when I got home, I noticed a slight coolant leak. It's the uh, cross pipe in the bottom of the radiator where the uh, transmission cooler goes in. There's a drain plug on there and it was leaking. So I tried to tighten it up again and that just made it a ton worse. It w went from, you know, dripping to pouring so I replaced it uh, I had a spare one laying around thankfully so that's been replaced and then I went to get the AC checked and wouldn't you know it is nice and cold in the car now no leaks found in the system filled it with the new gas and uh, we're good to go so hopefully that lasts the trip and longer but uh, he did a long pressure test of the system and um, there were no uh, no issues at all and did a long vacuum test as well no issues either so hopefully all that works well and we also went up for a drive and tried uh, uh or no we didn't go for a drive but we simulated driving something new i've never seen an ac uh, person that he's a new uh, uh ac technician i'm gonna start using now he's a very nice man he um he wanted me to hold the revs up at highway speed for a while so he could monitor all the temperatures. And he had all these like wireless temperature sensors and probes all around the car and it went to his phone. Really, really cool. So we held about 3000 RPMs, which is, you know, highway speeds and everything was just cooling very, very nicely. So I'm going to go home now, uh, pack what I need for tomorrow. You know, it's about 520 in the evening here. I'm going to leave 9 a.m. tomorrow. So, um, got some packing to do. I got some editing to do. I need to uh, clean the inside of this car out a little bit, give it a wash on the outside, put the carpets in, and um, I think that's it. And hubcaps. And then we're hopefully pretty much ready to go. And uh, we're just going to take it easy tomorrow. It's going to be a nice drive, but you guys get to come along. But anyways, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up, share it with friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. Until next time, I'm Adam. This was Lumica Classic. I'll see you soon.